We invite all to rise. Can be seated. Thank Brothers and sisters, on behalf of um, Michelle and the family, I'd like to welcome you to the funeral services. for Christopher James Carlson. <clears throat> and appreciate those of you that are joining us um, via technology as well. I'd like to welcome you. And uh, thank you for being here to uh, support uh, Michelle and the family in this difficult time. Um, my name is Brother Steve Larson. Um, I am the second counselor in the Eastlake Third Ward Bishopric, where um, Chris and Michelle reside, and uh, <clears throat> have been asked to conduct this meeting today. Michelle might regret that, uh, as uh, you can see. My, I have to I often. Uh, say that my tear ducts are broken, and indeed they are. Uh, presiding at this meeting is uh, Bishop Tom Reed, who's joining on the stand with me today. Uh, prior to, uh, um, to meeting here, uh, we had a, a family prayer that was given by a nephew of Chris's, Reed Mowry. I'd like to also recognize um, the chorister, uh, Rebecca Odell, uh, and uh, 
uh, our pianist, uh, Sister Elizabeth Hill, uh, who will be assisting us today. Uh, at this time, we will go ahead and sing opening hymn number 219, Because I Have Been Given Much, after which we'll have an opening prayer uh, by Carmen Law, a niece of Chris's. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can meet here together and um, that we've all traveled here safely to celebrate and remember um, our dear uncle, friend, husband, uh, son, and um, a wonderful individual, um, Chris. And please help us remember all of the good moments that we've had with him and um, how he's touched our lives for good and that we can carry him in our hearts um, throughout the rest of our lives and remember all the, all the lessons that he's taught us, um, persistence and generosity and um, tenacity and strength and everything that he's given us. Uh, and... We say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Carmen. Brothers and sisters, I'll outline uh, really quickly for you our program as it stands today. Uh, we'll first hear uh, from Ta Tammy Mowry, uh, Chris's sister, who will give us a life sketch. Uh, after which uh, we'll have a, uh, a tribute that will be given by Roxanne Beauregard, who is um, an aunt, we'll call it aunt, um, of Chris's. 
Uh, following that, we'll have a violin solo by Jim Law, uh, Chris's nephew, uh, O Holy Night, uh, after which uh, we'll have a poem that will be uh, read by Chris's brother, Fred, and we will uh, proceed to that point. Tammy. Perfect. You can't even really see me. I can kind of hide under the flowers. That's perfect. Always first. Okay, I just want to put this right here. Sorry, I don't know if I can. Chris was born August 31st, 1974. At the time, our family lived in the Salt Lake area. I was five years old. My older brother, Ed, then me, and my, our younger brother, Andy, as he was called at the time. And when mom and dad brought home another boy, one would have thought at that time I would have been a little peed. That came later. Actually, my mom tells me that I was so thrilled. <laughs> and so excited that I had a baby of my very own that I could carry around. She tells the story about trying to heal and use the bathroom by herself. When I came barging in, holding the baby, a newborn baby, by his chest, telling her, proclaiming to her that the baby was crying and that she needed him. So I'm sure I was too much of a helper for her, a young mom with four children under the age of six. If you've been able to look at the slideshow, which I didn't really remember this until my husband was pulling pictures together, you'll notice there's some pictures of Chris with a haircut like this. Fred has the same haircut in that picture. I will take the credit of beautifying them that day. <laughs> with the birth of this new angel, Christopher James Carlson and the family, Mom and Dad started a new chapter in their life. On August 29th, 1975, Chris, not even a year old, our little family was sealed together for eternity in the Manti, sorry, the Manti Utah Temple. There are many in this room that remember that day, probably better than I do. I remember I got a brand new white dress that my mom made. and that we got to see everybody in white in a really pretty room. Growing up, our family lived in many homes in the Salt Lake area, Great Falls, Montana, and for a very short time, Mesa, Arizona. Then in 1982, we lived in Bluebell, Utah, and that is where the story of Chris almost burning the house down happened. If you haven't heard that story, we'll, we'll tell it at lunch. Eventually, the family moved back to Great Falls, Montana. Chris graduated from Great Falls High School. We'll just ponder on that, because that was a great high school. Christopher served. That was for you, John. Did you just hear me ponder on that? Okay. Christopher served his mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to Birmingham, Alabama, Returning home, his family had moved to St. George. Chris met Michelle. I had 
had to ask her what her maiden name was because I didn't remember. She's always been a part of this family for me. <clears throat> Michelle Nicole Gerber, in May 1999, while working together in the movie theater, they were married September 21st, 2000, in the Bountiful Temple. And had, to say they have been inseparable since is an understatement. When in introductions were made, Chris always, and I'm talking always, introduced Michelle as his bride. I used to tease him about that, about the fifth or sixth year that they were married. I'm like, get over it. <laughs> but always the bride, and he treated her like a queen. They dressed, they even dress alike, even today. So others will recognize that they are always together. Sorry. Okay. Chris has many talents and was very creative in his professional and personal life. I admire his photography talent. Chris has an eye for beauty. Could be why he married Michelle. Sorry. Chris could not only capture a beautiful picture, but he could take his images and embellish them to be pure art. Then there is his talents as a graphic designer. <clears throat> to do what you love and call it work is truly a blessing. In addition to creating Jim and Carmen's comic book style wedding announcement, Chris designed mom and dad's 50th wedding announcement. And I think the last thing I bothered him about creating for me was an Eagle Project flyer for Grant. He was one of those that I would call, can you quickly make me a flyer? And I want it to do this, this, and this. Well, I'll see what he can do, he says. And within half an hour, I usually had it in my email. Chris's hands, Chris's creative hands have been a part of many, many projects in my life and the life of many people in this room and all over. Prior to his multiple melona, mel melanoma, I knew I was going to mess that up, melanoma, what is it? My, see? Get up here and do this for me. <laughs> Come on. Okay. October 2017, he had already been battling a rare disease. I believe this he named his brain tumor Jarvis. Is that right? Okay. To pull a quote from Michelle's blog at the time, she said, talking with John one day about 16 days in the hospital felt like eternity. He made the correlation that the Olympic Games were 16 days long. We may not have run a marathon, dipped in the pool, skied down the mountainside, or put on ice skates, but instead com competed and survived one of the most physical, physically and emotionally difficult experiences of her life. I think she could repeat these words many, many times in their fight. Chris battled valiantly with fortitude. Family and friends show their love and support by wearing t-shirts, first of the maroon color, with yellow lettering saying, Team Chris, our Iron Man does not fight alone. It was his battle with cancer that he affectionately became known as the Iron Lion. Chris eventually designed a black t-shirt with his own Iron Lion cartoonized. Is that even a word, cartoonized? That's my word. Just <clears throat> a few days before his passing, I was there for uh, a little bit before Thanksgiving, and he was describing that he has come up with a different design for a new shirt as we were discussing new shirts. When I asked him if Isaac could tell me what it was, you know, I like to be in the know, he said, no, and you won't like it. So I still don't even know what it is. <laughs> it's probably all about video gaming because that is another aspect of Chris's life that is outside my realm. Yet through video gaming, I am told that he is connected with people all over the world. More important to me is the family relationships that have developed. 
Michelle mentioned his gaming being an outlet for him as he played with his nephews in Montana, Washington, and Utah. Throughout this play and conversation with their family, relationships grew. Michelle said it has been a blessing that he was able to escape the difficulties of life from the comforts, comforts of his home. I'll introduce two little boys to you. They are wearing Kansas City Chiefs today, so you can't miss them. I think they might go to the nursery at some point. Our oldest grandson, Jonah's not wearing his because he outgrew it. Our oldest grandson is Jonah Christopher, and our youngest grandson is Dylan James. Their middle names are after Christopher James Carlson. You see, Chris has a, had a profound impact on our children. I say has, present tense, not had. Because his influence will last longer than his body. As adults living our lives, Chris and I didn't share much other than a visit here or a Christmas card there. However, our children, especially our older children, as they gradually transplanted here in Utah, Chris and Michelle have reached out to them and inviting them for pumpkin carving contests, Hawaiian parties, game nights, and provided a place for them to just come hang out and be there. Our children are their children. Christopher James Carlson passed away suddenly and very unexpectedly on a Saturday, December 3rd, 2022, at the age of 48, after a long heroic battle with cancer, he fought honorably for five years, one month, and 13 days. That's my adding it, so it could be wrong. I stumble on numbers a lot. After hearing of his passing, I had to rock it out the next day. And if you know me, I like, you can usually tell what kind of mood I'm in by what music is playing. And I hope that Guns N' Roses doesn't mind that I adapted one of their songs to my sweet brother. All right, I'm not gonna play it, but for those that know it, it's got this long guitar intro, okay? All right. He's got a smile, it seems to me, reminds me of our childhood memories, where everything was as fresh and as bright as the Montana sky. Now and then, I would see his face. He takes me away to that special place. And if I stare too long, I'll probably break down and cry. Yay. They sing it. Whoa, whoa, sweet bro of mine. Whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 sweet love of mine. He's got eyes of the deepest kind. And if I thought again, I hate to look into those eyes and see an ounce of pain. His hugs remind me of a warm, safe place where I long to sigh I, and pray these feelings and this heartache to quickly pass me by. Yai. Whoa, oh, oh, sweet bro of mine. Whoa, oh, 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 sweet love of mine. And then there's this fantastic guitar solo that lasts forever that you can cry to. And then at the end he goes, where do we go? Where do we go now? Where do we go now? Our crying does not stop today. As we put his mortal, battered body to rest. However, he is close, and as we remember him and keep him close, this is a time to mourn. Not to mourn that our brother 
your son, Michelle's husband, your uncle, your nephew, and your beloved friend. He's free. He's free from cancer. And that is so much joy to me. We mourn for ourselves. He's not here physically. Not here to send that Star Wars reference text for the 15th time. Not here to tell a joke or send a Marco Polo. He's not here to hug or to touch. And this makes us very sad. Chris has many things that he is passionate about in his life. One of them is Christmas. He absolutely loves Christmas. Not just the day of Christmas, but the whole season from looking at lights. I remember always teasing him about this because he loves Halloween and then he just jumps straight to Christmas. And there is a holiday in the middle there, which is one of my favorites, but they just always jumped. He said that it was always because Michelle was working retail and they didn't have a lot of time to decorate, but I really know that they just couldn't wait for Christmas. He just loves Christmas. So here we are. Christmas season. At his funeral. And this makes this season hard. But I ask you to consider his love for this time of year. Think about that all Christmas celebrates the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends and family gathering together. Wonderful food. Chris loves good food. He loves cookies. He loves mom's pink cookies frosted cookies. Christmas is about hope. Hope is everywhere. There's a song that says, hope is everywhere. Jesus Christ has come and everything is clear between the little, tiny little baby and all my friends and family. It's the best time of the year. It feels like joy. There is a reason for joy. As a challenge in this moment, it is hard to find the joy of this season. But Chris is free, and the only word I can think of is hallelujah. Uninhibited from portals and tubes. prescription pills and hospitals and everything that restrained his mortal body. Our Savior Jesus Christ did come. He died so that we can all live again. Death is not the end. Michelle is married to Chris for time and all eternity. Yes, Chris was preceded in death by our older brother, Edward, but our family was sealed together. I have faith and hope in these promises, knowing that we will all be reunited again, and that brings me peace and joy. Families are forever. Thank you all for coming. I share these thoughts with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. awesome to see a full chapel. <clears throat> when they told me that we could show slides during this 
funeral, or excuse me, memorial service. Um, I approached it with concern, um, but I felt it was a tribute to Chris and his techiness that I needed to do this. So I hope you appreciate the pictures that Michelle and I were able to pull together for this. So Chris had a way of making everyone feel loved, whether it was someone he had known for many years or even someone he crossed paths with for only a few moments. Despite my lack of knowledge about Star Wars, movies, gaming, I was blessed to grow closer to Chris. Our relationship started to deepen about five years ago when I spent time with him in the hospital watching the movie Taken. He liked when I got nervous and scared. Um, my heart melted when he started referring to me lovingly as Auntie. I was shocked and humbled when Michelle told me they had decided they wanted me to speak at this memorial service. We are all here today to honor Chris because he touched our lives. He made a great impact on our lives. He loves us and we love him. I love the words to the hymn, each life that touches ours for good, because they describe our feelings about Chris. Each life that touches our life for good reflects thine own great mercy, Lord. Thou sendest blessings from above through words and deeds of those who love. What greater gift dost thou bestow? What greater goodness can we know? than Christ-like friends whose gentle ways strengthen our faith, enrich our days. Chris touched each of us for good, and our lives will be forever blessed because of him. Michelle said, we can now honor Chris, a man who brought light, love, beauty, and laughter to us. Our presence here today reflects our desires to express gratitude to both Chris and Michelle. Michelle is grateful that Chris's parents and siblings and nieces and nephews and uncles and aunts and cousins and in-laws have traveled very far, flying and driving in wintry conditions in order to honor him. They have come from Montana and Washington, Colorado and even Nebraska. Michelle appreciates the outpouring of loving messages from friends near and far. She appreciates friends and neighbors who have supported them through acts of kindness. And I apologize for not being able to mention everyone's names who I'm aware has just offered such support and help. And, and when Michelle has asked, they have just come through for her and helped make this time easier for her and to honor Chris in the way that she has desired. She appreciates Alicia and Raylin for making the cookies and people for bringing food, delivering thoughtful care packages to the hospital, mowing and shoveling the driveway by their 93-year-old neighbor. Um, Michelle is grateful this service is able to be broadcast via the internet so friends throughout the country, from California to New York, and even across the ocean, a dear friend in Venice said he can be here today to honor Chris. Michelle commented how she has gained a greater awareness at this time that even though time passes without connections, it goes to show you how the bonds of love remain. We can now take this opportunity to say thank you, Chris, for showing us how to love, how to have enthusiasm for life, how to share your knowledge and talents, how to have courage and strength, and how to laugh. Thank you, Chris, for exemplifying how to love one another Michelle observed how everyone who knows Chris developed a strong bond and connection with him. 
Whether you know Chris's family, friend, or an acquaintance, he made you feel important and loved. He loves his parents. He was thrilled to connect with and spend time with his siblings and nieces and nephews and grandnieces and nephews. He developed close and lifelong friendships through his love of gaming, Star Wars, movies, and football. He loved to talk about the things he loved with everyone. It's admirable the brotherly bond he has with John, who has been by his side for 31 years. John has enjoyed many laughs with Chris and Michelle. He has always been there to support Chris and Michelle through all their challenges. Chris's life was greatly enriched by enjoying a weekly lunch visit with his neighbor and friend, Steve. Chris even developed a close relationship with Archie, the manager of Outback Steakhouse. Instead of getting angry and creating an enemy when an error was made on his order, Chris became friends with Archie and would even travel far to visit him. Thank you, Chris, for sharing your computer graphics, computer and graphics knowledge. Chris was a highly skilled and self-taught man. He provided his computers and tech support during Y2K, prevented the disaster um, when he worked at Econo. He was so good and obtained many, so many great reviews that he was entered into a contest and won a big screen TV. He was able to apply his computer and graphics skills when he worked at newspaper companies. He especially enjoyed helping with marketing for the lights company that does those lantern festivals. Perhaps you could take time to light a lantern for Chris someday in the future. Michelle will. Chris helps so many people with their computer and Facebook questions, and so be prepared. If you had Chris help you do things, Michelle may not be able to come in and help you out. <laughs> Chris helped teach Michelle how to use Photoshop. This picture of, see, it's magically working. I don't even have to push a button. Somebody's behind the door over there doing it. <laughs> um, this picture of the Jordan River Temple shows the skills that Tammy was talking about. I always loved how he liked to enhance the colors in a picture. Michelle told me that in this particular picture, he took four pictures and deleted the people in the pictures. Pretty amazing to have a picture turn out like that. It was a blessing for Chris to be able to work from home as he faced his medical numerous medical challenges. Thank you, Chris, for bringing color and beauty to our lives with your artistic talent. When I look at Chris's art, I admire his ability to capture and enhance the vibrancy of colors. It was hard to decide to only put two pictures up here. Chris was able to bless the lives of others by sharing his art on his mission and took pictures of weddings and family of, of not just family, as Tammy mentioned, but friends also. Thank you, Chris, for epitomizing what it truly means to be passionate about life. I mean, passionate. Chris loved Star Wars. He actually loved all movies, some of his favorites being Thor, Iron Man, Lord of the Rings, Pacific Rim, and any superhero movie. But it was obvious he was a complete fanatic about Star Wars. For those of you who never had the opportunity to visit Chris at home, you missed out on seeing Chris's Star Wars shrine. Prepare to be amazed when the next picture reveals only a small portion of his Star Wars collection. Chris often quoted lines from Star Wars. Not only would he say lines, but he would sound just like the character in the movie. This fall when Chris was seriously ill, fighting super, a superhuman battle with sepsis and a brain attack, he struggled with speaking, and Michelle was very worried. One day, he greeted someone with the phrase, hello there, just the way Obi-Wan Kenobi said it. 
Michelle was relieved. She knew that if Chris was still quoting Star Wars, Chris was still Chris. Take a few seconds to think of one of your favorite sayings that Chris would say. My favorite was sweet. I can't say it like him, but I can hear his voice when I say it. Chris was an avid gamer. When he was young, he was a tabletop gamer, creating the rules and characters with his friends, Matt and John. Chris enjoyed many variety of games from those with intriguing challenges like the world of Warcraft and Minecraft to watching simple lawnmower and farming simulators. I've learned a lot the past few days about this. <laughs> Over the years, Chris achieved such great success and finally reached his goal that the level he needed to be of being streamed. Those of you who understand that know how marvelous of an accomplishment that is. Chris developed amazing relationships through gaming. He appreciated their support as his gaming skills became compromised due to the pain and complications from medications and chemo. He spent countless hours playing Pokemon with Michelle. And in November, Chris and Michelle's life had sort of returned to normal or their cancer normal, which wasn't totally consumed by medical stuff. They planned on participating in a Pokemon event on Saturday, December 3rd. Unbeknownst to them, it was time for Chris to level up to heaven. When you ask Chris about his favorite food, he wouldn't simply just say the name. You would see a sparkle in his eye, joy in his face, and hear the excitement in his voice as he described the food. Chris loved Hungry Howie's beef cheeseburger pizza with ranch or Cajun flavored crust so much that he and Michelle would sometimes drive over four hours to St. George where they enjoyed eating pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner before returning home to South Jordan. There's now a hungry Howie in only 45 minutes away in Layton if you want to go try it. Chris loved duck donuts, where a cake donut is made hot and fresh in front of you. Chris loved the yellow cake donut with chocolate frosting. Chris loved swig drinks, and even named one the Iron Lion made with Dr. Pepper, raspberry and peach puree, and vanilla cream. You'll have to try it. Amazingly, Chris's favorite flavor of ice cream was just vanilla. Chris loved chocolate chip cookies, and Michelle made them for him even before they started dating. Michelle said, crumble cookies saved our life and became our thing. As a reward, after undergoing frequent doctor appointments, difficult medical procedures, and perpetual chemo treatments. Remember to think of Chris and not only have one of his favorite foods, but to be passionate and love your food. Why not take the opportunity to think of Chris as you enjoy eating hung Hungry Howie's pizza, duck donuts, crumble cookies, ice cream, and a swig. Craig loved his, Chris loved his trucks, his vehicles. In fact, he loved them so much, he named them. Their current vehicle is named Scarlet, which is a similar color to the burgundy truck Chris had named Master Chief. He even named a muscle car Michelle had rented as a gift for um, them to celebrate his birthday. It was, white, it was a white Dodge Challenger, and he named it Olaf. Chris and Michelle tried to have the same color of vehicles. When Chris sold his truck Phantom to his friend Travis in St. George, he even had to visit Phantom and hear him growl again. I saw the video <laughs> of Phantom growling. Why not enjoy naming your vehicles just like Chris? Chris loved the Kansas City Chiefs. His passion began when Chris actually beta-tested fantasy football 
He would go to the library and look up stats. He stuck with them, even when they were pathetic. <laughs> Weren't you all just so thrilled for Chris when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl in 2020? It was a sweet day. Let's all cheer for the Chiefs this year because of our love for Chris. They better win Sunday. Thank you, Chris, for reminding us to be faithful. You can tell by the subject of Chris's beautiful photography where the source of his inspiration is anchored. He took many pictures of LDS temples and of God's beautiful creations. Chris and Michelle loved teaching the gospel to the young three-year-olds in the Sunbeam class in primary. Chris and Michelle kept a prayer in their heart as they endured many difficult and scary medical procedures. Thank you, Chris, for being a wonderful example of a loving and devoted husband. Chris and Michelle met when they were first assist, where they were both assistant managers at the Gateway Movie Theater in Bountiful. Their friendship grew before they even went on their first date. Michelle was a bit shocked when Chris told her on their first date he was going to marry her. She was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Many months later, she enjoyed watching his expression on his face when she finally told him, I'm ready. Chris's, I loved watching Chris's face beam when he talked about Michelle's talent for painting her fingernails. He would say, look at this picture, look at that. You know, see these nails she did? Michelle enjoyed that she was passionate about her talent and he enjoyed he was, enjoyed that passion with her. They even got into designing her own colors and selling dipping. They were very busy during COVID. Sometimes Chris even helped Michelle paint her nails, like the seeds on the strawberries. Chris was very tender and took care of any little boo-boo that Michelle had. Michelle was very loving and took care of all the big wounds Chris suffered. Chris and Michelle's love is deep and strong. Chris was very protective of Michelle, like a lion. One time she was having difficulty communicating with a nursing agency. When Chris offered to call for her, he suggested she leave the room to protect her from any language she might hear. <laughs> when Chris was gaming with his friends and their language was rough, he would ask them to clean it up. I love the message in a card I gave them after they celebrated their 20 years of marriage. In the years that you've been married, the Lord smiled on you in times of joy, guided you in times of sorrow, and showered you with his love every day. He has truly blessed all those who know you, who love you, and who are touched by your happy marriage. I know God has blessed Chris and Michelle, and their love has blessed us. Thank you, Chris, for ex inspiring us as you exemplified strength, courage, and faith in your battles. When Chris was first diagnosed, his family lovingly supported and strengthened him by making a t-shirt with the sayings, as Tammy mentioned, our Iron Man does not fight alone, and cancer cannot silence courage. Chris was touched by the pictures his grandnephews Jonah and Mason colored for him. He had Michelle put them in a place in his hospital room this fall so he could see them. Chris changed the mascot of his cancer battle to the Iron Lion. Chris showed us how the Iron Lion is so powerful, courageous, determined, brave, and resilient. We all marveled as Chris fought many foes. Before he was diagnosed with cancer, Chris endured many challenges caused by a benign brain tumor. Just as Obi-Wan Kenobi said, if you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you pale in comparison to Chris Carlson. Vince Lombardi said, it is not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up. Chris got knocked down and needed a tracheostomy or a hole in his neck and oxygen to breathe. Chris got knocked down 
and needed kidney dialysis. Chris almost got totally knocked out in his battle with sepsis and a brain attack, but Chris got back up. Who gets off dialysis? Who says goodbye to a trach and gets his voice back? Who keeps accepting difficult, never-ending cancer treatments with their crappy side effects in the battle against multiple myeloma? Who spends weeks in an intensive care unit and months in the hospital and after two weeks from being discharged is able not only to walk without the use of a walker or even a cane, but is able to return to his own home. Chris Carlson, that's who. Move over, Mahomes. Chris Carlson is now the quarterback on my fantasy football team. Alex Smith, you are not at the top of my list for making the most miraculous comeback. Chris Carlson, the Iron Lion, is. Chris Carlson did not quit. He didn't know the time on the invisible game clock was running out. On December 3rd, he chose to undergo a procedure to help him breathe. He was looking forward to continue enjoying life with Michelle. He was blindsided by an unexpected foe, the common cold. Chris was fighting to the end. Chris and Michelle have deeply appreciated the care and support provided by Dr. Saboroff and the numerous compassionate medical caregivers at the mothership at Huntsman Cancer Institute. Michelle loved how Dr. Saboroff also cared for her and referred to her as my dear. He always knew what to say to calm her heart. When I asked Michelle if there was anything she would like to say, me to say, she said she is so amazed to know how loved Chris was by so many people. She has appreciated the many kind acts of service through texts, Facebook posts, emails, phone calls. Many of the touching and sweet messages have been perfectly timed and precisely worded to comfort her. Michelle is experiencing profoundly overwhelming emotional and physical grief. Please keep her in your prayers. She asks that you continue to reach out and share your thoughts and memories of Chris. When you are gaming, watching a movie, or seeing anything to do with Star Wars or the Kansas City Chiefs, send Michelle a text. When you enjoy a pizza, donut, cookie, soda, take a picture and send it to Michelle. Your simple kindness will be honoring Chris and showing love for Michelle. Remember, it will take her time to start to emerge from her socially distanced world of battling cancer during the COVID pandemic. In closing, I would like to say thank you, Chris, for making us laugh. Chris was a happy man. Chris always had a smile on his face. Chris always brought a smile to our faces. We love you, Chris. May God bless you, bless us with vivid memories of you. May the force be with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our comforter, our Savior, our Redeemer.
Thank you, Michelle, for giving me a moment to say something. I have no idea what to say. I wouldn't do any good at it anyway. I forgot this would be here. I think more appropriate would be a halo or destiny background for little dudes and a, yeah, I don't know, anyway. But I'm gonna say this word for word the way Chris wrote it during our last, what, Ed. Everybody is here. Nobody wouldn't miss it for the world. Not just anybody wants you back and somebody wishes they could see you again. Everybody has cried a little. Nobody is stronger than they think. Anybody can wish it was back to normal, but somebody knows you're happy. Now, whether everybody is Nathan, nobody is Zach, and anybody is Hans, somebody could be Fred, Alex, or myself. We all know we wouldn't trade the time we had with you. One small tidbit, because it was humor. There's 10 of us. Thanks, Mom and Dad, there's 10 of us. Six boys, four girls. Whatever those girls are doing, they've evened it up. So watch your backs, brothers. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, one uh, quick housekeeping item before I give my closing remarks. Um, for those of you that would like to join us for the internment, um, it's a, a walking distance uh, just down the road here. It is fairly close. If you feel like you can't make it a, a block and a half, that's okay too. You're welcome to, to drive down. Um, and the, the dedication of the grave will be, will be given by Adam Gerber. Chris's brother-in-law. <clears throat> um, I want to thank um, Tammy and, and Roxanne and, and Jim and, and Fred for the beautiful way in which you've honored Chris. I had... Um, the opportunity shortly uh, after Chris's diagnosis to take he and Michelle the sacrament each Sunday. And it, it didn't take long for the two of us to realize we had a lot in common. And I, I like to think that the conversation went something like this, where Chris said to me, do you like Star Wars? And I said, yeah. And he said, cool, we're buds. Um, blossomed into a very tight bond and friendship where we spent the last five years just about having lunch every week. And I got to experience what many of you already know about Chris. And that is that he loves Star Wars. He loves the Chiefs, video games, Michelle, and Star Wars, obviously. <laughs> but those weekly gatherings gave me a unique insight into 
the man that we're honoring today. And I immediately saw in Chris those indelible Christ-like attributes that, that we all seek and aspire to have. He was kind. He was loving. He was generous. He honored his priesthood. And he loved and adored his sweet bride. And I knew he was special. (laughs) Eight years ago, I stood at this very pulpit for the funeral of my son. (laughs) And as I've told Michelle, as we've counseled together over the last few weeks, the pain and separation that comes from death is never an easy burden to bear. But it's also a necessary component of our existence and absolutely part of our Heavenly Father's great plan of happiness. I'd like to quote President Nelson who said, the only way to take sorrow out of death is to take the love out of life. My wife uh, has recently stated that she equates that to uh, the fact that sorrow is love that we can no longer express or give to those that we've lost, and I, I believe that. Chris was given merciful relief from the pain that he's endured in this life. In a revelation given to the prophet Joseph Smith, the Lord said, And it shall come to pass that those that die in me shall not taste of death, for it shall be sweet unto them. And I have no doubt that Chris is experiencing that sweetness. Through the atonement of our Savior, Jesus Christ, We know that eternal life is possible for us all. Jesus, as he spoke to Martha, said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Chris had a firm understanding of this. And he never lost his faith. Over the last few years, I've had the honor to lay my hands on his head on multiple occasions. And in each instance, to me it was remarkable to feel of his faith. It was incredible. I'm going to miss. My good friend.
And I look forward to the time where I'll be able to wrap my arms around him once again. But until then, I like to follow the teachings of Richard G. Scott, who said, now we have reason to live extremely well. I'm grateful for a savior that has provided us with that opportunity. I'm thankful for Chris and for Michelle and for each of you that have been here today to show support and love and to mourn and to also celebrate. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will close by singing hymn number 293, Each Life That Touches Ours for Good, after which our closing prayer will be given by Mark Mowry, a brother-in-law of Chris's. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this opportunity to be here 
And remember, Chris, we thank thee for this beautiful memorial service, for those who have spoken so well, who have um, brought Chris back to our memory. We thank thee so much for his life and his devotion to thee, to Michelle, to his family. We ask thee to please bless us that as we uh, continue through our life's journey, that we remember Chris and all that he brought to us. Ask a special blessing upon his wife, Michelle, and his mom, Mary. That as motions run so deep, that thou wilt fill that void, and that they will fill thy presence, and know of thy love so strongly. Father in heaven, we thank thee once again profoundly for this day, for our great friend, for our great example, our great son, uncle, cousin, for Chris and all that he means to us. We leave this with thee in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll invite all to arise. The pallbearers, if they could take their place over in this aisle here, the funeral director will lead you out.
Thank you, everyone. You're dismissed.